Hi, I'm Luann Midgley from Tell Your Story Videos, and this is Shop Talk. Today, I'm going to be speaking with Danica Sommerfeld. She is the owner of Coastal Bookstore in Coquitlam, BC, and she's nearing her first year anniversary coming up in October. And what a year it's been. Danica, I am so looking forward to speaking to you. How did you become a bookstore owner and um, what's the path uh, that took you there? Right. So it was the summer of 2019 and I was halfway through um, an MFA in writing and I decided my next goal would be to become self-employed. So through the fall, I was working through a few different ideas. Um, I, I wanted to do a little writing, maybe a little teaching. I was thinking about having a retail truck selling books um, that would be very seasonal. In December 2019, um, I decided it would be a bookstore. I started planning. I let my employers know um, far in advance that I plan to leave the following June to um, open my own business. And then instead of opening the bookstore, I, like a lot of businesses were pivoting or, you know, what they were doing. And so I didn't have a business yet, but I pivoted my plan to open online first. The original plan was to get the brick and mortar store uh, functioning and then like get a, a good website going. So I switched that up. I launched the online store in the fall in October. And then I wanted to have a storefront to take advantage of the retail season for Christmas. So I opened this pop up. And at the, the end of November, I was like really starting to run out of savings and get nervous. So I started looking for a pop up space and I started applying for jobs at the same time. And I thought whatever works out here is what's going to happen. So the bookstore is what happened. And now it's eight months later, and we're still in the pop up space. So well, I am so, so grateful that you are, uh, your pop-up is still there. And, um, and I had come in to peruse to check it out because I, I just love a good bookstore and uh, an independent one is uh, all the better in my opinion. And so to come in and, and to take a look at your books, I was so happy to see some uh, Canadian authors there. Um, and uh, picked up a couple of books and then also then ended up ordering a few from you as well, which I really liked that um, aspect of your business uh, to be able to just text you, say, I need this book and you, you, you order it and, and, and get it in and, and then I can pop in and see you again. So um, just love that neighborhood model. I think it's wonderful. Um, so Austin Avenue is where you're at right now uh, in Coquitlam. How, how is that going for you? I mean, it was, a, like you said, a pop-up and, and it's kind of now a bit longer. Um, do you, What's your future like there? Um, well, I can't stay in this space. It is temporary. I'm subleasing from another business that plans to move in. They just can't yet. So it's been a month-to-month -month arrangement. I am actively looking Um I, I have a verbal agreement that I can stay here until January, but I could, I could just as easily move in September. I'd like to avoid moving right before Christmas. Um, this area, now that I'm here, people know that I'm here. Uh, the neighborhood's been so welcoming. There are some other businesses around that um, I have relationships with now and they're all wonderful. Um, that said, it isn't the, I really need something that's a walkable neighborhood. That was, that was part of the plan. And it's really something that the store needs and I'm not getting that here. Um, so when it's time, it's gonna come down to what's available in a good space, which could be around here in, in Austin Heights or it might be down in Port Moody where I originally intended to be. You, you say that you promise to over-represent the underrepresented voices. And I really like that. Um, um, who do you, why do you promise this? And, and who, are, who are you thinking about? Representation matters. People who are underrepresented, it matters a lot to them to see themselves um, reflected in all kinds of media. Books are one, one type. But also the rest of us, we need exposure to uh, voices other than our own. Uh, myself, for example, you know, straight, middle-aged, white, 
somewhat educated woman and who writes a lot of books? White middle-aged women, right? So um, in fact, I just, I went onto the New York Times bestseller list today just to check my, my little theory that I know was right. <laughs> Um, and today on the New York Times bestseller list, out of the top 10, um, seven were straight white women and three were straight white men and all of them were married. <laughs> so not very diverse, really. So we still have a, a long way to go. Um, some numbers are easier to measure than others. Like um, I really refer to Statistics Canada a lot to figure out who are we as Canadians. Um, so that those kinds of things are easier to measure. Um, for example, 27% of us identify as um, a visible minority or indigenous. And so um, I try, I aim for a minimum of 30% BIPOC representation, but also I take into account that here in the lower mainland, we have a large Asian population. So I try to have a lot of Asian authors and, you know, picture books for the kids and stuff like that. And then depending on the age group, six to 11% of Canadians identify as queer. So um, I try to aim for 12% um, of LGBTQIA uh, authors uh, represented in the store. Other thing, other, um, others are harder, like um, disabled people, I have some, actually those were really fast. I was looking around today, I'm completely sold out. So there's there's lots of different people that you're catering to obviously, and I really like it. I really like how it's, um, it's inclusive, very inclusive and people should feel very comfortable in your store. And, and, and if you don't have a title or an author, then I'm sure you're, you're quite willing to, um, to get that for people um, on their behalf. Can you describe a little bit about uh, the behind the scenes in your business, Danica? Um, I'm sure a lot of people don't know what it's like to own and run a bookstore. Um, what, what is it like uh, every day to, to be among books? It must be a fabulous, because like, I love to read. I'm a big reader. But um, beyond your customers, uh, who else are you having to deal with? It's really just me sitting here plugging away. It gives me lots of time to research the books that I have. I'm different in that my um, collection is so small, which is why I do special orders. I do those for people every single week. That's kind of nice, actually. Um, it allows me to be picky and do my research and make sure the books are really good. And the original vision for the bookstore was actually very heavy on events, including becoming licensed to serve wine at like book clubs and cocktails at poetry readings and, you know, things like that. So clearly those things aren't happening. So time will tell. Uh, the year has really changed what was going to happen and probably what will happen. So who knows? Wondering about how you're making ends meet. I mean, you, you're pretty honest about it and, and that it's, it's pretty tricky and tough. Um, you're using Patreon um, and, you're, and you're asking straight out for some support until the uh, bookstore can help pay you a salary, which I, I think is um, a really wonderful model. I've never actually used it before, but I am actually using it for you in the, for the first time. So I'm a patron of your store. And, um, and I was very happy to do so because what I get in return is I get your uh, daily diary of your business and how you're running things and and it's you call it your daily your business drama diary I believe <laughs> and I just love it because it's basically a daily email it's one of the few emails that I actually uh, look forward to getting by the way <laughs> uh, you're such a great writer and um, and it's it is shines through and um, so I was just wondering about that what was it like to write about um, your business like live basically um, every day and how it's going um what do you get out of it when when you're doing that when you're writing um, so so open about it all uh, well I was very thankful when you said that you like it because I'm really embarrassed most of the time <laughs> I'm thinking especially because most I feel like mostly what I do on there is complain about how broke I am all the time but that's why we're there it's because I need money and you guys are giving me money so um I do really appreciate that uh the original plan was that Patreon would 
pay me directly, but really it just funnels into the store. And now it's gotten to the point where I can't survive without a salary anymore. So the bookstore has been paying me and I get a little raise every month. And this month it was pretty tight. In fact, uh, payday was yesterday and usually I order more books today and that didn't happen. So, but I needed to get paid so that I could pay my rent. So it's just a little bit stressful, but I'm also kind of not worried about it. Um, things seem to work out and I, you know, I do have some freelance work um, on the side and I really love it. Um, so that's good. I've always been a journaler. I find being really reflective helps me to figure out what I'm about. It helps me think through problems um, and even just to like purge, you know, stuff that clutters up your mind. So I would just say I'm journaling a little less. Patreon's getting a little bit more. It's different because it's something you're sending out to someone rather than something you're doing internally, but it does, it does the job. I really hope that you turn that into a memoir uh, someday about, you know, your first year in business and all of the challenges that you've been facing um, during during this whole time. Um, what have you learned most as a new business uh, owner, Danica, that has made kind of the biggest impact on you? And, you know, as your first anniversary comes up, it's in October, right? Um, what's, what's the biggest thing do you do you kind of take away from this this past year? I think, I think there are two things. I think the biggest one is just feeling now like it's okay to start small and to take, like, I'm growing a little bit every day, but there are teeny tiny steps, but it's still going somewhere. Um, and, as, you know, the pop-up was the pop-up, but then those first couple of months where this was the store, it was a little bit embarrassing because it's so tiny and it's so... Like I can't even really fix up the floor, like and the walls, they're a little bit damaged, but it's not my space. So there's not a lot I can do. Uh, so it's a little shabby, which wasn't the plan. You know, it was gonna be bigger. It was gonna be better. There were gonna be staff. We were gonna have more hours. We we're gonna have events. So, uh, and pretty much right off the bat was the plan. So now it's more of a vision. <laughs> so, and just accepting that. And, and knowing that it almost has been a blessing in disguise to force me to start smaller than I intended. It's because it's everything's a learning curve. I'm doing everything. So there's a lot of learning. And then I think the other thing was I am learning to trust myself more. There are a lot of people out there who say, you can't do this. You can't do that. Um, you don't know what you're doing. But I know stuff and I make good decisions <laughs> most of the time. And if I don't, I learn from my mistakes. So kind of a true entrepreneur, Danica. <laughs> well, I thank you so much for taking out um, some time out of your very busy day. And I, uh, I look forward to, um, you know, coming into your store and, and buying many more books from you and telling many people about you because I want you to be around for a very long time, whether you know, it's there in, right now in Coquitlam or whether you end up in Port Moody, wherever you end up. So thank you so much for sharing your story here. And, um, and you, you're definitely, um, you're impressing me anyway. And uh, yeah, I love your store. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for everything.